Hey, guys. Hey. Something's not right. I'm going to try that again. Hey, ladies. Hey. Okay, TEDx Ryerson, help me out here. <laughs> so when I said, hey, guys, eventually everyone said, hey. But when I said, hey, ladies, only the ladies spoke up. And I know what you're going to say. Well, guys is a gender neutral term. I understand that. I walk into a room, and there's four women in the room. And I say, hey, guys. They all go, hey, Jeff, what's up? What do you want? If I walk into a room, and there's four guys sitting there, and I go, hey, ladies. What's the reaction going to be? Who's this punk? What does this guy want? Think about how we value women in society, how we value the feminine. Why can't ladies be a gender neutral term? How long do you think society would let that last? I want you to think about how in this country, women make, a half, make half of the population and only a fifth in parliament. Over 600 Aboriginal women are missing or feared dead. 50% of women in this country will face some form of violence. My name is Jeff Pereira, and I'm very humbled to be here at the TEDx Ryerson event. And this is reminding me of how far Ryerson's come from the days of being a Polytechnical Institute. And it reminds me, with December 6th coming up, of a Polytechnical Institute where over 20 years ago, a man walked into a classroom just like this one and shot and killed the women in that classroom, eventually killing 14 women, shooting another 13. So think about how we value women and the feminine in this society. I'm part of a group that came out of that incident. I'm a volunteer facilitator with the White Ribbon Campaign, the world's largest effort to engage men in ending violence against women. I've also co-founded, as was mentioned, the campaign here, which seeks not to blame and shame men, but to inspire men to become a part of change that affects both men and women, to give ourselves permission to be the best version of ourselves. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about words. How words shape and impact all of us. If you go, when you go home, TED.com, you'll see a week's worth of TED Talks. In those TED Talks, you'll see 1.3 million words are shared. So think of the impact of those words and the words you've heard today. Words set in motion, the physical and social construction of what exists in your life. So I want you to imagine you wake up in the morning you know, you stub your toe, oh, you go downstairs, you spill the coffee, and what do you say? Oh, man, it's going to be a bad day today. Guess what? It's going to be, because you just said it. Think of how words shape our lives. My friend, Hannah, shared an amazing quote with me over the summer. She said, we say to others what we need to hear. Our whole lives, we say things that we're telling ourselves. And what I'm telling you today is something I'm telling myself as well. My mom always told me to weigh my words. We talked a lot about childhood today. And when I was little, I used to do a lot of drawing and a lot of writing. And I'd write my name in the top right corner. And my mom would always rip it out, my name, and keep it in the pile. And one day I asked my mom, why do you do that? Why do you rip out my name when we throw out the pieces of paper? She says, I want you to value your name and value those words. And I think of the impact of the words of a parent how they impact and shape us. Words that inspire us, words that haunt us, words that we wish were said, words that we wish were never said, words that we heard, words that we never heard. So I'm going to share some words that were shared with me from a parent and the impact it had on me. So my parents are from Sri Lanka. Arranged marriage, they went to England. This is over 30 years ago. The experience of raw, honest, overt racism. They decided to come to Canada. My dad was going to become an engineer. Boom, I popped out. So they said, this kid's going to be westernized and supersized. <laughs> yeah, my parents coined the phrase. They, I wasn't going to experience what they experienced. So they raised me on craft dinner, macaroni and cheese, ice hockey, McDonald's, and I was going to be a real Canadian. You can imagine how that turned out. And I was raised to only speak English in the home. The only time I heard my native language was when my parents were fighting. So the time came when it was time for me to I was old enough, it was time for my mom to get back to work. So she found a family that spoke English only to babysit me. So she leaves, them, leaves me with the family and she goes off to work. At the end of her shift, she comes back to the house and she finds the family there and finds me on the floor sitting. And I look up at my mom and she loves telling the story. I said something in my language. 
as an English-speaking family, just looked at them like, well, they don't know what I said. I spoke English. I, they speak English. But my mom reacted by her eyes lit up. She scooped me up and said, oh, my God, I love you. I love my baby. And she ran off with me. What I said was, bitch, take me home. <laughs> now, I'm not mad at you for laughing at that, but I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to get comfortable with this discomfort you're about to feel. Where did I hear those words from? From my father. Some of my earliest memories is my mother covered in bruises at the hand of my father. So I think of words, because it starts with words. Words command action. Words dictate action. Words inspire action. So I say words speak louder than actions. And it starts with things like labels. It's supposed to look like this, supposed to look like that. You can't do this, you can do that. Oh, what's the earring all about? So the way we label ourselves as people, we love to put ourselves in boxes in society. Before you're even born, before you even set foot in this planet and say a word, you are labeled, you're put in a box. When your mother and her partner said they were pregnant, the first thing people said was, oh, is it a boy or a girl? Because they want to put you in a box, the gender box. They want to talk about gender roles, gender expectations, gender norms, gender expression, gender do's and gender don'ts. And how does that affect all of us? So I got an idea for you, TEDx Ryerson. It's my big idea. I say we end gender. I say we end the concept of gender because of how it holds us back and shackles us back. Now, you're, I know what you're thinking. Well, how are we going to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Some of you are thinking, I'm going to go to the bathroom until this clown's done. Now, hold on. Give me a second. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Are you ready? Check your nails. Check your nails. TEDx Ryerson, check your nails. Come on. Check them. Everyone at home, check your nails. How do you check your nails? Do you check your nails the girly way or the manly way? Can you believe how non how ridiculous is that? Is that your manhood can be defined by how you check your nails? Men have to assert their masculinity every minute of every day. The way they look, how they talk, how high-pitched their voice is, things like that. We have to assert and prove that we're men. You have to be a man. So more talk about childhood. Imagine me, four years old, on the soccer field. I'm on the bench. Coach says, Pereira, get in there. Yeah, OK, I'll go play. All right, here we go. And I get ready. I'm on the field. And my coach is watching. Friends, family, parents are probably watching. People I don't know are watching. Ball comes to me. I run to kick the ball, and I fall. I hit my knee. I mess up. What does this four-year-old boy start to do? Starts to cry. Thank you. And what does the coach say? Be a man. Shake it off. Pereira, walk it off. Don't act like a girl. Stop crying. Don't cry. So right away, this little four-year-old boy says, oh, so I'm emotionally, I'm physically hurt, but I'm really emotionally hurt. But I can't express that. I can't talk about it. I can't share it. A man's supposed to be tough and strong and rough and take it. And anything less is soft and weak and feminine. How do we value women in our society? How do we value the feminine in our society? So Tony Robbins, look at that screen. Eh? Boom. Tony Robbins had a TED Talk where he talked about there being 6,000 words in the English language to describe emotions. Let me ask you. How many emotions are men allowed to express? How many emotions do we allow them to express? We raise a lot of our men to be emotionally illiterate. Imagine it's a toolbox that you have where you're raised by your parents, by society. The way you handle problems, you reach into your toolbox and you pull out the solution. Now, the way we raise a lot of young men is to be of anger, and aggression is the only way. That's what we allow them to be. So they reach into that toolbox, like the only thing they have is a hammer. So every problem they have in their life, relationships, romantic relationships, any problem, they use their hammer. And think of how it affects women, too. I think of being here at Ryerson and how we reflect the larger community. Think of a program like fashion. How many, most of the students in fashion are women, but who makes it in the world of fashion? Who are the fashion designers? They're men. Think of engineering, how we say, well, you know, there's, only, there's mostly men in engineering. We don't all say that. Some people say it because women aren't very good at math. So there's a book called Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. And in that book, she talks about a test, a test where they took a test. They gave young men and women a test with some basic math questions, just the questions, nothing else on that sheet. The men and the women, the young men and women scored pretty much the same. Then they gave another batch of students the same test, except they added a question. What is your gender? And can you guess what happened? 
something subconsciously clicked with the women. Oh, that's right, I'm a woman. I'm not supposed to be good at math. And those women scored poorly. So those words expressed with our mouths and also words in, the, in touch. There's a word in every touch, every interaction, accidental or premeditated collision of flesh. Every time one makes contact with someone, a word is exchanged, a word is spoken. That word can be please, sorry, excuse me, stay, go, relax, start, stop, don't, don't, no, no. We are saying more than what is just spoken. And what about silence? What about when no one says anything? What happens when no one speaks up? When no one speaks out? The White Ribbon pledges to never commit, condone, or remain silent on violence against women. And I know what you're thinking. Well, pff, what difference does it make? The world is the way it is. The question I ask you is, what difference are you making? The world you live in is the world you shape. We all have an impact. Every minute of every day, we all have an impact on this world. What impact are you making? What difference are you making? It's time to provoke freedom. You make it happen. You don't wait for it. So I'm going to tell you a story about big words. And in this space of academia with all the uh, big words, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a story about big words. So I've had the privilege of speaking at the YWCA Common Ground Conference for two years in a row. It's a conference where high school students across Toronto come because they want to end gender-based violence and homophobic bullying in their hallways. And I got to speak at the last one. And we break into smaller groups afterwards, smaller facilitated workshops. And I got to facilitate one. So we go into a room. There's, about, there's a few young men and women there. And one of them is this soft-spoken young brother, very shy. We get to the point where we're talking about role models. And he says, I'm a, I'm a role model to my younger brother. I said, that's right, man, you are. So we started talking about role models. We talked about parents. We talked about fathers. Fathers who were never present. Fathers who were never there. Fathers who were physically present, but not emotionally present. I think I've covered a lot of fathers in that. This young man was raised by his mom. He didn't know who his father was. So I said to him, can a woman raise a son to be a man? He thought and said, yeah, I think... I think she can. So it came time for us to decide who was going to speak and represent the group when we went back into the hallway for the collective conversation. And there was a young lady in that group who was an art student from art school and was very academic, had the big words. I was like, girl, you need to be up here. I need to be sitting listening to you. But I said to the young brother, why don't you do it? Why don't you represent our group? He looked up and said, but, but I don't speak English so good. I said, you speak English better than me. He said, but, but I don't got those big words. I said, brother, the words you shared today could move mountains. So we went back to that space, that big hallway, and everyone gathered, and all the kids went up. And you better believe, if that kid didn't go up, I was going to push him up there. You're going. But he went. He went up. So they sat in a panel, and one by one, they talked about what they learned in the smaller facilitated conversations, what they're taking back to their schools. And it got to his turn. And he took the microphone, and it took him a long time. He just sat there and stared at the microphone. And then he finally said, today, Jeff shared a lot of things, taught me a lot of things. But the school I go to, they wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't hear what I had to say. But there's some students that would listen. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell them. That young man's a part of change, change in our society. He is going to change the future. Do you believe we can change the future? I do. You're all proof of it right here. I believe in a future with no violence against women. I believe in a future with no violence. And I believe in love. And I love each and every one of you. And I thank you for your time. I'm out of time for my words, but thank you for hearing my words. And thank you very much. <laughs>